Welcome to Outside Extra, Ellen here with the lovely Mike. Hello. And we're going to be running through some of the games that you should be excited for this month. Get hyped. Classic fighting tournament game Tekken is making a return for the new generation, with new features such as Rage Art, Power Crush and Screw Attack. We're looking forward to seeing how these play out and the return of some great characters. So, Mike, Tekken. Yes. I remember playing the first one on PlayStation wow. 1. It was excellent. Yeah, yeah Tekken's great. great. Really yeah. Really Are you looking forward to it? I am, yeah. They've added a story mode, yeah. which is kind of interesting. Um, I think the bar has been set pretty high very recently by Injustice 2, because their story mm -hmm. mode's amazing. So it'll be interesting to see Tekken's take on that sort of thing. I like yeah. the idea of fighting games catering for the single player, because, yeah. you know, obviously they're, they're traditionally considered multiplayer games, and, you know, the entire rest of the industry is moving towards esports, but it's really nice to see these games going, well, you know what, you can play this on your own as well yeah. if you've got no mates like me. Yeah. <laughs> it adds um, to the lore as mm -hmm. well and everything. I'm quite looking forward to it. Yeah, there's a guest appearance by um, Akuma as well yes. from Street Fighter. Finally, the Tekken that. half of the Street Fighter Tekken crossover thing is happening, so yeah. look forward to that as well. For those who prefer a slower, more psychological gaming experience, The Town of Light has you exploring an abandoned asylum in Italy, looking into the stories that happened there. So, Mike, we played some of this. There's kind of like a scary element to it, mm. but there's also like a very serious, deep story, which yeah. they've been, you know, they've done pretty well from what I've heard. Yeah, it's 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 stuff to know. I mean, we've only played a, a sort of short amount, but they, they deal with some fairly like heavy issues and stuff. Yeah. This is not like a roller coaster jump scare sort yeah, of thing, no. but it's got a deeply unsettling atmosphere and some really nasty stuff. It's going to be interesting to see in totality how it how it handles this sort of issue because yeah. you know it's based on a real asylum in Volterra in Italy mm -hmm. um, so you've immediately got to be quite sensitive I mean this place was only I think it was only shut down in like the 70s or yeah. something like that so there's a lot of like recent history probably people still alive who've been affected by this so I'm hoping that it's gonna be a, a like a sensitive portrayal of, yeah. of this stuff because um, yeah, it, like I said, it deals with some fairly heavy stuff. This is not like, hey, scary game, you yeah. know, like, this is going to be a really sort of a, a affecting experience. June will likely have Elder Scrolls fans jumping back into the world of Tamriel as the Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind is released on June 6th. Helping warrior bard Vivek, you must protect Morrowind and indeed the world from a new Daedric threat. Always a new Daedric Sick. threat. Always the way, always the way. Did you play Morrowind when it came out? Uh, not when it came out, but I have played it since. Yeah. And it's a lot of people hold it up as their sort of favourite um, mm -hmm. of the Elder Scrolls games. Yeah. Uh, there's been various mods to try and bring Morrowind into the Oblivion engine and yeah. into the Skyrim engine. And stuff. Yep. So this is kind of almost an official recognition of the fact that people really are desperate for a bit more yeah. Morrowind. I quite like Elder Scrolls Online. I think yeah. it's like a pretty solid MMO and obviously if you're kind of into the Elder Scrolls games it's really fun to explore that world in, in its sort of entirety Entire, because it, yeah. it, you know it's, it's a huge chunk of the Tamriel kind of world. One of the things they're doing with this expansion is really opening it up so you can explore every area at every yeah. level so you're not kind of barriered off. Yeah, it was yeah. very control a controlled experience the first time around. Now it's just like, you know what, just everyone just wants over. to explore this world. Yeah go where you want to go and and, and so that in that way I think it's going to feel a lot more like the traditional Elder Scrolls games yeah. which is really what they should be playing on you know it, it should be an Elder Scrolls game first and then an MMO second yeah. rather than the other way around yeah roll cages at the ready as dirt returns for another dose of mud flinging rally action expect lots of procedurally generated tracks and intense racing simulation Mike on a scale to one to a trillion, yeah. how excited are you? Pretty much a trillion. Yeah. Um, no, I'm really, really excited about Dirt 4. Uh, Dirt Rally, the previous one, was really, really excellent. Yeah. Um, and that was a kind of almost like a spin off, a very sim heavy sort of spin off. Whereas mm. Dirt 4 is kind of designed to cater for both those kind of simulation heads, but also kind of regular gamers. So it has yeah. a handling mode that will be sort of easier for more casual gamers to control, a bit more like sort of Dirt 3. But then if you want to crank all the simulation stuff up, that's there as well. And the really exciting thing is this procedurally generated yeah. stage generator. So one of the cool things about rallies rather than races is there's a degree of sort of uncertainty about what corner's coming up next. You've got to react to the pace notes and things like that. So the fact that this will procedurally generate stages means you'll never have to see the same stage twice, yeah. which keeps that sort of freshness rather than, you know, if you exhaust a traditional rally game stages, you know them all off by heart and yeah. it's, it's it's not quite that authentic rally yeah. experience. Yeah, it's really clever technology. You wouldn't necessarily know that they weren't hand-built sort of courses. Um, so yeah, impressive tech, uh, great sort of handling underneath it all. And um, for sort of racing game fans, it's a, it's a real sort of high point. I think that's high praise coming from you. Yes. <laughs>
Nintendo's fledgling console gets a new first-party release in ARMS, a fighting game that uses the Switch's Joy-Con motion controllers or a standard controller to punch, block and dodge, all at a considerable distance from your opponent. Expect customizable loadouts and arm cramp. So, Mike, is this just like a slightly posh Wii Boxing or is this something new, do you um, think? I, I feel like uh, it's going to be slightly more sophisticated than Wii Boxing, at least I'd hope so, given that that was part of Wii Sports. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, at the very least, the detection on the kind of uh, controllers on the Switch is going to yeah, be a lot, a lot so um, much better. more accurate. So, yeah. I've not played it myself. Um, I have. What uh, was it like? Luke and I played it at the N Nintendo event uh, in January and it was fun mm -hmm. and I beat him. So that's why yes. it was extra fun. Uh, but it is really good. Like, so you've got kind of your, your, your general punching, then you've got mm -hmm. your power attacks where you mm -hmm. use both. And it's a bit more tactical than like we boxing. Just it's just <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see people actually using the motion control stuff on the yeah. Switch because, you know, obviously there's a load of other clever stuff it does, you know, the portability, the ability to sort of play local multiplayer and things. But, you know, there's motion controls in there and really good sort of vibration feedback and stuff. Yeah. So hopefully that's all used to the fullest in, in arms. Stormblood is the second expansion for the MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV and marks the point at which support ends for the PS3 version of the game, which had 6 million players as of last summer. Stormblood ups the level cap to 70, adds new areas and a revamped battle system, plus swimming and diving in bodies of water. So, have you played any Final Fantasy MMO stuff, and you are you excited about swimming? Um, <laughs> yes, in bodies of water, I am excited about swimming. No, I, I've never played it. I'm not one of the six million people who played it, but uh, it's presumably pretty popular, I guess, if they're mm -hmm. continuing support and if it's been running since the PS3. The new Final Fantasy is always kind of exciting and yeah. interesting, and I know there is, there is a sort of dedicated fan base. I think people will be transitioning over to the new generation, hopefully, keep going and having lots of cool new stuff in future rather than it going away. That yeah. would be sad. I'll be playing Elder Scrolls online. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure it's good. I'm sure it's good. Space Adventure Sim Elite Dangerous makes it onto PS4, getting on for three years after it first arrived on PC. It came to Xbox One in 2015, but is now finally on Sony's console too. So, Elite yes. Dangerous looks pretty good. Yes. It's got a little bit of a fan base mm -hmm. already. Are you excited about it coming to PlayStation 4 as well so more people can play it? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a really cool space game. And although there was a lot of fuss around No Man's Sky on the PlayStation side of things, like Elite Dangerous has quietly been getting better and better. It was part of the game preview program on Xbox and it's been improving and they've been doing some really interesting things like uh, recently aliens appeared in oh. the Elite Dangerous universe uh, which freaked a bunch of people out they were just <laughs> randomly discovered by a player they're doing some interesting experimental stuff and um, I think at its core it's, it is a great Elite game you know it's uh, James Cameraman James yeah, has played a ton of it. Uh, and they've done all sorts of cool stuff. You can have a giant sort of almost capital ship sized thing. And then you can bring your mates in to fly the fighters that are deployed from the ship. So the level of ambition has increased so much since it was first announced. Nice. So um, No Man's Sky was the kind of stylized 70s sci-fi art mm -hmm. kind of one. This is a, a little bit more real, realistic sci-fi. Pretty. Mm. Nice. At the end of the month, PlayStation are hitting lots of gamers right in the nostalgic land with another remastered classic, Crash Bandicoot. And this time we're being treated to not one game, but three, as Crash Bandicoot 1 to 3 is released on the PS4. Stay away from my nostalgia land. So. <laughs> are you a fan of the original games? Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot yeah. is great. It's difficult to get super excited about it because it is the game you played how yeah. many years ago, but it's been remastered. And yeah. I, it's cool to see uh, some of these old sort of 90s platform mascots coming yeah. back. Yeah, well, I'm, um, I'm really excited because the only part of Crash Bandicoot I played was one level that I got right. on a demo disc from a magazine because I just ne like too I cheap to buy the full I game. I couldn't buy the full game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Had no money. So yeah. I can pick it up now and be like, yeah, and can actually catch up and know more about this series, yeah. which I know like weirdly a lot about. Do you even know what a Bandicoot is? Is this a type of badger? <laughs> <laughs> it's a marsupial, Ellen. I it's know. a marsupial. So those are just some of the games coming out this month that you can still get excited for. Because usually, like June's quite a quiet month in yes. terms of releases, but there's some good ones out there. Uh, if you can think of any others that are on your radar that we might miss, let us know in the comments down below. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to Outside Xbox as well as Outside Extra for loads more gaming information and stuff coming out soon. And we will see you next time. Bye.